And Joey Jones is on the phone with us. Hi, Joey. Hey, guys. How's it going? Uh, let's get your take. We'll give you the floor. Yeah, listen, if this were about deterrence, it would have happened a couple of months ago, at least at least 150 some odd strikes against the United States ago. Uh, this is about pacifying Americans who are literally sitting here going, really, we're going to let someone hit us 200 times and kill three of us now and, uh, and injure dozens of us. And uh, and, and we're just going to say that you don't. That's our best policy here. Um, you know, I hate to believe that presidential politics has anything to do with keeping Americans safe. And I heard the judge talk about that earlier on the show, that uh, that, that doing anything now may potentially affect oil prices and then escalate into a worse economic situation at home. Well, why is that? What policies led to that? The truth is Jordan's watching. Saudi Arabia is watching. Israel, for a matter of fact, is watching. And I don't know that any of those countries that we want to be an ally, that we want to be on our side if something were to break out, are being inspired by the United States right now. But what is happening is that a lot of Americans are sitting here going, I don't think my son or daughter needs to serve in this military. And I'm, I'm for whatever changes our perspective on our government's ability to keep us safe, regardless of who the president is. That's not even a, a hit against President Biden as much as it is an observation of where we are as a country. Three Georgians were just welcomed home in caskets. And I can imagine their families are sitting there going, yes, retribution. They're probably sitting there going, I hope whatever happens today and tomorrow and the next day stops the next three families from mourning three more Americans that were somewhere we didn't, most Americans didn't even know they were doing something that most Americans aren't aware that they're doing. Good point. Judge? Joey, you know, one of the things that General Kellogg said a few minutes ago, he said Iran does not want to go to war with the United States. And yet we all know that we can spend all kinds of efforts going after the proxies, but Iran is in charge. And the, the Iran trying to deny the connection is absurd. They supply, they train, and they pay them. Why is, why is Iran pushing us if they're afraid to go to war with us? Do they have, are they close to a nuclear weapon? This is what I believe. I believe Iran got what they wanted already. I mean, um, immediately after three Americans were killed, there's a dispute between the United States and Jordan as to where this happened, because they don't want this mess on, on their doorstep. Uh, look at what's happening in Israel. Look, I mean, Look at the fact that America is having to excuse itself or answer for every single thing it does in the Middle East right now among its own people with a presidential election coming up. I think for Iran, that's enough. They don't need to go to war with us to show their neighbors that we may not be as strong as we say we are, that we may not have as strong of a voice within our country as we say we do. And I think that's the goal for them is, is the doubt among countries that might align with the U.S. or Israel moving forward. And I think that is where they're winning right now. I don't want to go to war with Iran. I'm not Lindsey Graham. Listen, I, I spent eight years fighting two wars over there, and I know less about it today than I did when I was 18, I think. Mm -hmm. So I, it's not that I want us to go to war with Iran. I want a president and an administration that is so decisive and so well-planned that before our own dead make it home, we've settled the score and deterred them from doing it again. Or you know, and this is a lot to ask for, so decisive and so strategic that we never have folks die because there were never 170 attacks that happened to begin with. Can I ask you then what you think about the decision or, you know, on the, on the timing of telegraphing that there was going to be a response for several days and that the IRGC pulled all of its leadership out of Syria yesterday? I think that President Biden truly believes, and this is not a hit against him, but I truly believe that President Biden's administration, their strategy from the beginning, and they're sticking to it, is they can buy and talk their way out of a potential crisis or war. And to date, those things have only made me feel less secure and made those friends of mine serving in the military feel less supported. So I believe that that is a part of their strategy. We're going to show a force, but we're not going to hurt you so bad that you feel the need to retaliate. I don't know that President Trump ever had those concerns, and I felt much better about it back then. Hey, Joey, you're in Georgia. I spend my weeks in Texas. We come from a similar background. You, of course, have made great sacrifice for this country on the battlefield. I'm curious, when you bring in your personal experience, Joey, and everyone that you know, Brett brought up, the polling shows America has no appetite for another war. You hear... Um, individuals like the general suggesting that strikes 
are warranted in Iran. Wars don't happen overnight. They kind of metastasize from a bunch of small decisions. You end up in a war. You know, we don't launch wars anymore. We, don't we certainly don't declare wars anymore. We remember when the last time we had a congressional <laughs> declaration of war. Do you think there's a case for any leader right now to be made that convinces the American public that we should be messing around with war with Iran? You know, my, my biggest concern is that I was a part of a 20-year war that ended so desperately that the American people, I don't know if they don't have an appetite for war as much as they don't trust their government to take them into a war, no matter how just it may appear or how necessary the cause may be. That's what's scary. When the American people, who ultimately have to spend the money and shed the blood, no longer trust their government to send their sons and daughters or themselves to war, it's not about we don't, tr we don't have an appetite for war. If something like 9-11 happened today, we would have all the appetite in the world to go seek retribution and prevent it from happening. Yes. But our faith in the system we have, and really that faith is broken down at every level all along the way, from the taxes we pay to the borders we have to the words we use. And that is the industry of politics making its way into the minds and hearts of us to the point that we don't trust our government for our security anymore. And that's the biggest concern I have, because that leads to recruiting uh, woes. That leads to defense spending woes. That leads to the Lindsey Grahams and Tom Cottons calling for what may be the best strategy, but every one of us sitting here going, that's a war hawk. That's someone that just wants to drop bombs, because that's what we've seen for 20 years. That's what they've shown us. For 20 years, I lost my legs in a war that Lindsey Graham would say, and I'm not beating up on him. He's just he's the most honest and vocal advocate for his position. But he would say, I lost my legs because he told me this sitting on the couch on Fox and Friends, and, and my jaw kind of dropped, that I lost my legs because we, we did the right thing by fighting the war over there, and it didn't come here. But you know what? That's an easy thing to say when you can't show me the intelligence brief, when you can't do a 60 Minutes piece or a, or a Brett Bear piece that shows how those connections by fact, that we're told to disbelieve that, that we're told to disbelieve the person who gets to be the press secretary at that moment or who gets to be the president at that moment. And I think the American appetite for believing the facts, as the government tells you, has gone out the window with the age of information and some of the bigger voices in politics right now, uh, political commentary. Wonderfully said. Greg, do you have anything from Joey? No, it's always good to hear him because uh, literally – He's the expert yep. in my mind. And I just think, I mean, I just, re punishment, I, and Joey, you can tell me to shut up, but I, I, punishment for me is always you put somebody in a hole that they wouldn't be in if they haven't committed the infraction. These things always seem to me as incredibly performative, not as a deterrent, but just to say we did something because the, the bad guys end up back at the starting block where they just start back up. You know, here's the deal, Greg. We spent 20 years taking out strategic target after strategic target, strategic person after strategic person, asset after asset of our enemies, and they never lost the ability to harm us at about the same rate. Yeah. So it's hard for me to believe that these bombings today reduce the ability for our enemies in the region to attack us, and that's what's concerning because – if you're not sending the right signal, which I don't believe this is a signal sending to anyone but the American people, at least do something effective that stops their ability to harm us. And I don't, I don't, I don't have the experience that would lead me to believe that's what's happened today. Joey Jones, thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.